addition to that, it had it guaranteed the rights to free access to the commons, to free access to navigable waters, to the fisheries, the wildlife, etc., etc. And those rights ascended the people of the state when we had the revolution in this country. And they're part of our constitutional law, and they're part of, you know, of, of the constitution of every state, including the state of Oklahoma. But now, you know, so the constitution of New York says the people own the state, own the fish, but we don't own them anymore. The Southern Company owns them now. They got away with something that King John wouldn't get away with. They monopolized, they privatized the fish, and they privatized the air from my children's lungs, because my kids can't breathe in it anymore. And they privatized, you know, they, 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 they privatized the air. 18,000 people die every year. A million asthma attacks, a million lost work days. Um, they, you know, they privatized the lakes and the rivers and the Adirondacks, the Appalachians, the private and public timber stand. They've stolen from themselves. And, um, and all of those impacts impose costs on the rest of us. It should, in a true free market system, be reflected in the price of that company's product when it makes it to market. But the Southern Company, like all the, every other polluter, has used political clout to escape the discipline of the free market and force the public to pay its production costs. And when all of the laws that were passed after the environmental laws that we have in this country, the 28 laws that were passed after Earth Day 1970, that protect our air, our water, and endangered species, and food safety, etc., and wetlands, all of those laws were intended to restore free market capitalism in our country by forcing actors in the marketplace to pay the true cost of bringing their product to market. And what we do with the Riverkeeper Movement, where you know I have 160 water keepers and river keepers around this country, each with a control boat, they go out and they sue polluters. We don't even consider ourselves environmentalists anymore. We consider ourselves free marketeers. We go out and into the marketplace and catch the cheaters, the polluters, and we say to them, we're going to force you to internalize your cost the same way that you're internalizing your profits. Because as long as somebody is cheating the free market, it distorts the whole marketplace, and none of us gets the advantages of the efficiency and the prosperity and the democracy that the free market otherwise promises our country. And what we have to understand in America is that there's a huge difference between free market capitalism, which makes our nation more efficient, more prosperous, and more democratic, and the kind of corporate crony capitalism, which has been embraced by this White House, which is as antithetical to efficiency, prosperity, and democracy in America as it is in Nigeria. And, you know, I want to say this, that there's no, you know, I have nothing against corporations. Corporations are a good thing. I own a corporation. Corporations drive our economy. They've been great for America. They encourage people to assemble wealth, to risk it, and they create jobs, and they create prosperity. And all those things are good. But they should not be running our government. And the reason... <laughs> the reason they shouldn't be running our government is because corporations want a different thing, don't want the same thing for America as Americans want. Corporations don't want democracy. They don't want free markets. They want profits. And the best way for them to get profits too often is to use our campaign finance system, which is just a system of legalized bribery, to get their hooks into a public official and use that public official to dismantle the marketplace, to give them monopoly edge or, or, or a, a competitive edge or monopoly control, and then to privatize the comp to begin plundering our treasury, our air, our water, the things that you know we own, the public commonwealth, the public trust assets. And that's what they do. They're, they're going to plunder it. You know, and what we should, you've got to remember this is that corporations legally cannot do good things for our country unless they're doing good things for themselves first. Okay, they're not allowed to turn themselves into philanthropy. It's against the law. When you see Walmart, you know, bringing bottles of water, you know, down to the Katrina victims, they're not doing that to be nice guys. They're doing it because they think it's going to expand, increase shareholder value over the long term. If they have a different reason for doing it, any one of their millions of shareholders can sue them, and they will win that lawsuit. It's called wasting corporate assets, and it is illegal in the United States of America. Corporations are not allowed to do anything unless it's good for them first. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. We want. We've designed them that way, and it's a good thing. Because 
corporations, it's illegal for like Walmart to turn itself into a philanthropy and say, I'm going to ignore the shareholders and give away all the money. You don't want them to start, it sounds good to do it once, but you don't want them to start doing that or nobody will ever invest in them again. We want them to be narrowly focused on shareholder value. And, um, and you know, that's how we design them. But we would be nuts once we made them that way to let them anywhere near our government because we designed them to plunder and they're going to plunder us if we allow them to. And that's why from the beginning of our national history, our greatest political leaders, Republican and Democrats, have warned Americans against the domination of corporate power. Teddy Roosevelt, a Republican, said that America would never be destroyed by a foreign enemy, by an Osama bin Laden. But he warned that our democratic institutions would be stolen from us by malefactors of great wealth who would subvert them from within. Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican, in his most famous speech ever, warned Americans against the domination by the military-industrial conflict. Abraham Lincoln, the greatest Republican in history, said during the height of the Civil War, 1863, I have the South in front of me, and I have the bankers behind me. And for my country, I fear the bankers more. And Franklin Roosevelt during World War II said that the domination of business by corporate power is, quote, the essence of fascism, end quote. And Benito Mussolini, who had an insider view of that process, <laughs> said essentially the same thing. He, he complained that fascism should not be called fascism. He said it, said it should be called corporatism because it was the merger of state and corporate power. And what we have to understand in this country is that the domination of business by government is called communism. And the domination of government by business is called fascism. And what our job is, is to walk that narrow trail in between, which is free market capitalism and democracy, and hold big government at bay with our right hand, and big business at bay with our left. And in order to do that, we need an informed public that can recognize all the milestones of tyranny. And we need an independent and aggressive press that is willing to stand up and speak truth to power. And we no longer have that.